Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the XR Club and welcome to today's video. What we're going to look at in this video is how you can use Excel to pull in all the historical pricing information for cryptocurrencies. Now, this is something I covered in a previous video using CoinMarketCap. However, since then, CoinMarketCap have made some changes and you need an API key to now get historic information. And from what I understand with the API key, you can't even get historic information unless you have the premium version. So this is really, really going to fill a gap for an awful lot of people. But before we get stuck into this video, I do hope you will give it a big thumbs up. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications button so you don't miss any more of my videos. I also hope that you will leave a comment below with your feedback on this new stock history function that we're going to look at. And I hope that you'll share this video across your social profiles. So let's have a look at how we can get historical crypto data into an Excel spreadsheet using the stock history function and using rich data types. So I have some cryptocurrencies listed here. We have US dollar to Bitcoin, Euro to Bitcoin, Ether to US dollar, XRP to Euro, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin also to Euro. And we're going to pull in historic information for these. Let's say we want the rates for the last 30 days. How could we go about getting that? Well, we can use this new stock history function. And the stock history function is a brand new function. It's so new, it's only in the insiders edition or the beta channel of Excel. Now, anything that's in the beta channel is subject for review before it's released to the general public. So some changes may happen to this function before it becomes live for everybody else. If you're not on the beta or insiders edition and you want to get this function, then you should sign up for it. So you do get access to this function as early as possible. So first of all, we're going to convert our data here into rich data types. Now, if you don't know what rich data types are, I do have other videos on that and I'll put a link to them below the video or you can click on the card above now to see them. So I've selected the cells and from the data ribbon, I'm going to select stocks. And what this will do is convert them text strings into rich data types. These rich data types are cells that are connected to information that's hosted on the web. Now the stock information are connected to exchanges and they are connected to um, stock exchanges and stuff like that. And that's why not all cryptos are supported. And I do hope one day that Microsoft connect directly with CoinMarketCap and allow us to do this with a connection directly to CoinMarketCap. But at the moment, we're limited on the number of cryptos available because cryptos don't trade on general stock exchanges. So we have these rich data types. Now you can identify that the rich data types of these little boxes here. And if you click on the little box, you can see little, you can see different information that is available on the card for them. And you can extract the information from the cards by basically clicking on the, the little extraction button within the card. And you see how that has pulled in a value for us there. But that's not what we're looking to do. We don't want current information from the current cards. We want historic information. So first of all, to start this, I am going to create a drop down so we can quickly switch between our different cryptocurrencies. So to do this, I will go to data validation on our data ribbon. I'll change any value to a list value. And then in our source, I will select our list of cryptos and hit enter and say, okay. So now we have a drop down that will allow us quickly jump between our rich data type cryptocurrencies. Now we can go ahead with our function to extract the historic information. And to do this, we're using the brand new stock history function. And the stock history function takes quite a lot of arguments as we can see, but we're gonna go through these because it's easy enough to understand it once you've seen it in action. So first of all, it's looking for a stock and we've put our stock into a cell here above. Now, if we don't have it in a cell, what you need to do is 
enter it in inverted commas. And once it's entered into inverted commas, it should be able to find it from the correct exchange. Then after this, it is looking for a start date. Now you can put in a start date such as the 1st of the 1st, 2020, and you see that goes in inverted commas, or you could put in the 1st of Jan, 2020, or whatever your date format is once it's in inverted commas. You can also reference a cell. So if I had a start date in a cell, I could reference that cell like I referenced the stock or you can use a formula. So let's say we want to look for the last 30 days. So we could say today, today minus 30, and that will give us the last 30 days dynamically, no matter what day it is. After this, it's looking for an end date. Now you see the way the end date is in square brackets and all the other arguments are in square back brackets. That means that they are optional. You don't have to enter them. The end date, the latest end date is always going to be yesterday. It's going to be the price of when the markets actually close. Now I know a cryptocurrency, they don't close, but it is the middle of the day here. So we're not going to get today's value. So I'm going to skip the end date because I don't want an end date in there. After this, we then have the interval. So we can pull in daily information, we can pull in weekly information, or we can pull in monthly information. I want daily information and daily is the default. The first one in all of these options is the default. So you can skip it by just putting in another comma. Then it's asking us if we want headers. The default, which we can skip is no headers. Then we can show headers, or then we can show the instrument identifier and the headers. The instrument identifier is this cryptocurrency listed up here. So we don't need that because we already have it listed in our dropdown. So we are just going to show our headers. Then we have our properties. We have property one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. Now these are the choices for our properties. We've got date, close, open, high, low, and volume. Now what I will say is that volume is not yet working on currency pairs and cryptocurrency pairs. So I hope later on that this will be fixed and we will be able to get volume in. But for the moment, we want to pull in the date. So we can put in zero for the date. We then want to pull in the open. So we can put in two for open. We want to put in three for high. We want to put in four for low. And then we want to put in one for close. So we don't have to put them in in the order that they're suggested to us. And we also don't have to put them all in. So they are our properties and we've gone up to five properties there. So I'm going to close that bracket and then I'm going to hit enter. And you see what has happened is that we have spilled data all the way down the spreadsheet for the last 30 days, showing us the date, the open, the high, the low, and the close value. Now these are dynamic arrays. If there is something in the way of a cell for, for the spill, so let's say we had a word in here today, we'll see that we get this spill error, which means it's not able to return the results for us because there's something in the way of where it wants to place the data. So by deleting this, you can then enter the data, the, the formula will then fill down into the cell. What you'll also notice here as well is that these cells are actually formatted, although they're not formatted at the same time. So the values are formatted, but the cells aren't, and it's intelligent formatting. So you'll see here that the cell type is general. If we click on any of these, we'll see that the cell type is a general format. Now general format is the default setting for Excel. And unless you have your cell formatted in a different way before you use this function, this automatic format will come in. So the date is formatted as dates and the prices are formatted in the right currency. So let us check this and change the drop down. Let's take Litecoin to Euro and we see that this has automatically updated as well. Now we can see that this is going from the earliest date to the latest date. You could sort it the other way as well if you wanted. You could add a sort function in here. So we could add the sort function and with the sort function 
we could sort descending and that will change the order in which they are actually sorted but I'm going to leave them as they were. Now using our drop down we can quickly change between all of the different currencies and for some reason euro to bitcoin isn't pulling in a value us dollar to bitcoin is also not pulling in a value so let me change these and to the other way around so it's bitcoin to us dollar instead and see if it pulls in the value that way so it does pull in the value if we have it that way. The problem is we had the US dollar first. So it won't go US dollar to Bitcoin. It could go Bitcoin to US dollar, which means that if I change this one, it should also do the same. So now if I change this to Bitcoin to Euro, it should also quickly pull in the information. Now using these cards, what we could also do is pull in the price now and that gives us the current price now because the last price here is the price for yesterday so this is the price of now now using this dynamic using this data here what we can do is we can insert a chart and we can insert a stock chart now i've purposely pulled our columns in in the order of date open high low close and the reason I pull them in in that order is because with these stock charts, you need to have your data set up in a specific way, in the way that the stock charts ask them for. So if we click on stock charts, we can see this one here is high, low, close, and we don't get a preview because we don't have them in the order high, low, close, we have open first. So if we select our high, low, close chart, we straight away get a preview. Now I have a full video on working with stock charts in Excel and I'll leave a link to that video below this video. I'm not going to get into too much formatting on this chart, but we can see quickly there that it's very easy to create a stock chart using these this new stock history function and keep it up to date. Now, if we change our chart, if we change our um cryptocurrency, our charts also quickly change too. So that's how you can now get historic pricing information for cryptocurrencies into an Excel spreadsheet. You need the stock history function. And in this case, I've used rich data types. I really do hope that you have enjoyed this video. It was very disappointing when CoinMarketCap changed their ways from allowing you get this information freely to having to sign up for an API. Now you can use Excel, which is really, really awesome. I know many people will be delighted to see this feature. So I do hope that you will leave your comments below this video and let me know what you think of the new stock history function. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.